This is Thomas, and the question this week is on self-sabotage. What it is, where it comes from, and how to go stop it. Two things before I get into this topic. One, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel to keep up with my content for mental discipline, effective communication, and advanced leadership training. And two, I really want to challenge the idea that the mind is separate from the body. That's not necessarily the case. If there's anything that I've learned this my time as a cognitive neuroscience, it's that prescribed information like ending self-sabotage does not exist in a vacuum separate from everything else going on in your life, but rather it exists on a continuum as a continuum, merely one puzzle piece in what is otherwise an intricate lattice of cause and effect relationships. From what thoughts are going on in your head, to how your emotions work, to what your life experiences have been, to who you have chosen to be your external influences. Even now as I explain information to you, I'm confident that the information in this video alone will not solve any degree of self-sabotage. You've probably been watching a lot of these videos and that's been the case. You've been watching more and more of these videos and it's still not solving the problem. The information alone from the last video on how to communicate more clearly will not make you a better communicator. The information alone in the have to mindset that's not gonna be helpful either in so far as you just take the information. And the information alone from the 40 day fast manifesto will not give you an enhanced level of self-control. You have to put in the work. You have to do the exercises because it is through focused and repeated action, you speak the correct language to every part of your brain to be working together towards your chosen outcomes in your life, not just the part that's listening to me right now. But until then, at this moment, it's my prefrontal cortex talking to your prefrontal cortex. It's my Broca's area speaking to your Wernicke's area, the parts of your brain that have to do with language processing and production. The brain is modular, thus each part has its own unique job to do, its own language, and your whole being is expressed by the collective bargaining of every area of your brain, no different than, say, the stock market when they come to a collective agreement of what the market price for an equity or an option is today their collective behaviors, a whole emerges. No different than the collective actions of your brain parts, the person you are actually emerges as well. My language and words only affecting a small piece of you, but you are able to teach to the rest of yourself, the rest of you that exist on that continuum of your life experience itself, to learn how to discipline yourself to starve certain self-defeating behaviors on your path to greatness. Sometimes that collective agreement our brain parts are making leads us on pathways that are not helpful on our chosen path to excellence, that pits us against ourselves, and one of those ways is through self-sabotage. Understanding the role of self-sabotage is absolutely detrimental to shattering through your limitations. In the words of the legendary Chicago Bull, Michael Jordan, limits like fears are often just an illusion. And I believe self-sabotage is an illusion we ourselves go and sustain and thus can go and break through with the right circumstances and the right behaviors. If you're not facing any level of self-sabotage currently, you are likely not pushing yourself to the limits of your capabilities because every high achiever and peak performer in business, leadership, and in life is marked by the typical behaviors like perfectionism, procrastination, or some variety of self-medication, and even worse, self-talk that's really, really bad, worse than most of the average people on the planet. It's perfectly normal response to perfectly inhuman conditions. You're not only doing things that humans were not designed and naturally to do, but you're shaping yourself into the person who can handle these challenges quite easily. It is perfectly normal to have your internal circuitry go haywire in service of pursuing excellence and achieving massive goals. Don't worry, you're not alone on this. I'm there right with you. Not only is understanding self-sabotage important for you as an individual, but it's an excellent tool to put your emotional intelligence arsenal into work as a leader. There are many behaviors you'll see in your team. And if you don't have a team yet, you better get ready to diagnose these behaviors. Some of these behaviors, which are written off as maybe incompetence or poor performance, is sometimes just self-sabotage rearing its ugly head on your team members, and you'll need to learn how to coach them to blow past it. I've just concluded business with a business partner who I could see was sabotaging his own success and the success of people around him. I knew his behavior was unacceptable, but where many were just writing him off as being grumpy or you know straight up narcissistic, I could at least see that there were many drivers from his life where he was committed to the downfall of people around him and he lacked the emotional intelligence and the introspection to see it. I stood around as long as I could to be able to learn from this and make sure I could permanently avoid people like this in the future, but the knowledge I possessed on self-sabotage really helped protect 
and fortify my self-worth and self-esteem by acknowledging that there were real success limitations in play and smart enough to leave so that my growth wouldn't be capped at where I was stuck at. Whether you'll find it in yourself or in others, you'll run into self-sabotage and you'll be rewarded for knowing how to diagnose it and make focused actions to resolving it. So what is self-sabotage in the first place? Self-sabotage is a term that refers to what happens when people undermine the goals that they themselves claim to go and pursue. You might visualize it as running a marathon and then right before finishing, deciding to stop in one place, start crawling, or worse yet, go run backwards. To everyone else, it looks ridiculous as if they were possessed by some external force to contribute to their very own failure. But this is a phenomenon that feels very familiar to the individual and through self-observation, it can be incredibly frustrating to be doing it over and over again, even while knowing it's not helping them achieve their long-term goals. Think about a goal you have for yourself right now. Think about a goal that you desperately wanted to move forward with and thus feel a deep sense of pain associated with the idea that the only person in the way is yourself and you can't seem to get out of it no matter how many times you try to convince yourself. I'm with you. It's deeply frustrating, very painful, and quite humiliating to share sometimes, especially if you can see that everyone else seems to progress in it with this activity with great ease, but you find it to be very, very difficult. As far as diagnosis goes, you can identify self-sabotage when you, one, understand someone's explicitly desired goal first, two, see that they engage in behavior that hinders or retracts their goal progress, and three, even after explaining to them that they are doing it, they still seem to continue to engage in that process that hinders their own self-progress. As far as diagnosis goes, this should be easy enough to do with others, but it's going to be very difficult to do it yourself. Keep in mind, when you diagnose yourself, you have to create an abstraction of yourself and to understand it as if you were looking at someone else. But to try to authentically understand yourself is a lot like a fire trying to burn itself or ice trying to cool itself or light trying to illuminate itself. Each of these things has an effect on something else. It doesn't do it to itself. It should be equally ridiculous to think that the person that needs some level of improvement is also in charge of the improvement in the first place. So having an expert coach diagnose really is the only way to pick up some of these blind sides. Don't get me wrong, you can figure out a lot on your own, but as far as all of these additional blind spots, a lot of which ones are very, very painful, you kind of need someone else to help out. You might then say, that is interesting, but where does this self-sabotaging come from in the first place? I have a suspicion that it's an emotional phenomenon which is it ends with a thought process or a belief system, and there's just a conflict between those two things. So let me explain. It's easy to sit down and set a goal with a huge outcome. Feels good to go do, say, hey, I'm gonna make a million dollars, or I'm gonna become CEO of the company I work for, or I'm going to lead a 500 person workforce, and so on and so on. However, these goals cost time, effort, pain, suffering, and more importantly, these goals cost you other goals. You only have 24 hours in a day. You can only cut up that time in so many different ways. So while you can really go after one or two of these goals, you can't really pursue all of them unless there's a tremendous amount of overlap between these goals, but more likely than not, you're gonna have to pick one or two things. So basically what's going on is that there's a lot of pleasure and excitement that's associated with actually setting a goal, but there's a lot of pain with actually going through with it. So sometimes our preferences shift back and forth. And even though we say we wanna go do something, our emotional circuitry or our belief structures get in the way. So again, a thought process, like a goal, is getting in the way of your emotions and vice versa. This is a great example to explain you can't think into an emotional state and you can't think out of an emotional state, no matter how big or small your goals are, at least not in the way that people go and typically recommend like that. In a heightened emotional state, thoughts are really a byproduct of the emotion you are experiencing, more so than a free will you might consider yourself to go have. Really think about this the next time you find yourself in an angry state where there's a lot of frustration. Usually the thoughts that come from that are very much colored as angry or frustrated, or if you're very um, deposed, or if you're very anxious, or if you're very elated, sometimes the thoughts that emerge from that sort of place get colored with that emotion itself. So really the thoughts are the byproduct of the emotion more than anything else. So what I think is that anything that messes with your ability to 
formulate articulate thoughts or anything that destabilizes your emotional system is going to invite self-sabotage. This includes any sort of difficulty you may have had in the critical period of your childhood between ages zero and six and a half that you're forced to carry with you into adulthood. A dysfunctional family can leave you in a destabilized emotional state that invites low self-esteem, fear of commitment, fear of intimacy, and fear of other people in general, in fact, as well as invite belief structures that in their nature are self-defeating that might see evil, for example, as a strength. It's a very self-defeating thought. Or see vulnerability as weakness. Or that no good deed goes unpunished or that all or nothing relationship beliefs should exist, that someone else is supposed to put up with any abuse you might be putting them through, and if they don't like it, then they can leave, and then someone else will um, really go and put up with that. This is not how human beings work. Or really any sort of philosophy that can be traced back to a moment of intense pain that the individual just simply couldn't handle, and then from that intense pain, this sort of belief structure emerges, which is, you know, this is what's creating the sabotage in the first place. In short, you want to be looking for where thought processes have become poisonous or where emotional systems have become dysregulated. And really, the lack of skills or desire to go introspect on these thought processes or emotional systems are the key main sustainers of what keeps self-sabotage going. So while self-sabotage hinders you from achieving your explicitly stated goals, you might start to begin to see that it typically helps you achieve your body's biological goals. Look. Humans do one thing better than any other species. They adapt, and they adapt very well. However, no different than when you get a cut and then the scar tissue that heals over is tougher than normal skin, but somewhat in an unsightly manner. When people get hurt emotionally, they tend to adapt in the same way, creating uh, emotional or belief scar tissue that works really well to keep them protected, but ultimately are unsightly, they're unsavory, and they get in the way of them really stretching out and breaking into that unparalleled success they're looking for that their peers seem to really achieve quite easily. It's a tough process and life is tough in that way, but it works. It keeps you alive, protected, and surviving long enough to go and reproduce, tell the human story, and let the next generation pick up where you left it off. That being said, in the 21st century, we have the tools to go and diagnose self-sabotage. And I believe we can develop the skills to go and starve it and then have the discipline to keep it at bay so we can effectively move forward with grace. Here's what you can do when you have encountered self-sabotage. First off, meditate more often. I cannot tell you how magical meditation is to regaining control of your mind. Someone who has control of their mind can regulate their emotions better and be more choosy about their thought processes, not just thinking from their own pain. I'm gonna to have to make another video to describe this magic of meditation in more detail, but until then, every time you close your eyes for 10 minutes with no other stimulus coming in, your brain goes into a default mode network and magical things start happening that literally melt the processes that drive self-sabotage away consistently find a way of practicing of just sitting still with your eyes closed for 10 minutes a day. Second, find a way for demonstrating indifference to the outcome you're seeking now. This seems kind of counterintuitive, let me explain. A major driver of self-sabotage is fear of failure, but it is also fear of success. Fear that with greater success comes more responsibility. With more responsibility, there are more targets on your back. With more targets on your back, you don't trust yourself and maybe your ability to handle the extra scrutiny for the extra outcomes you're being entitled to. See how you can demonstrate indifference to the joy and the success that comes with the outcome and just treat it like it's nothing, like it's no big deal. If you remember from my video on the have to mindset, I did say to find a way of putting the fear of God inside of you to make sure you have the have to to achieve an outcome. But if self-sabotage is getting involved, it's almost better to not have to that specific thing. It might make more sense to actually lower the stakes so that even though winning is no longer a big deal, losing is no longer a big deal as well, and you're not really tied to the anxiety of the outcome. If you have found out where exactly you self-sabotage, go and make it less of a big deal. You might do this by engaging in a smaller version of that behavior, a lower stakes of that behavior, or just engaging in that behavior more frequently. The more frequently you engage with it, the less each iteration matters and the object of the outcome is no longer a big deal because it's just something that you do. So there's no reason for self-sabotage to occur in the first place. And third, 
find a way of stacking up a lot of wins related to the behavior around self-sabotage, wins that are both numerous as well as frequent. If you can stack up wins like this, you start getting used to the idea of winning and succeeding, and you get to see that the imaginary fear that is the success barrier actually is an illusion because you're dipping your toe in really the pool of winning and seeing that it doesn't hurt at all, that there's no real end of state consequences. It's not more costly and there's not more of a challenge to the status quo at all. It's actually quite easy to do and that you actually deserve to be winning a whole lot more because you're putting the work in. So find the smallest version of the task that you have and start stacking up a lot of wins and quickly. No task is too big or small. Just find something them for you to get numerous wins and quick wins. If you're a perfectionist, you're gonna to have to make sure that you loosen your definition of winning so you can identify progress as a win. If you're a procrastinator, you're going to have to make the tasks easier and easier so you can actually get moving forward a lot more quickly. This generates a winner's effect, which is really a feedback loop that's tied to your own biology and gets you into a flow state, gets you moving faster, gets you excited about and addicted to the process of winning without the threat of self-sabotage getting in the way. Self-sabotage is going to haunt us in new and unique ways as we continue leveling up. As the old adage goes, new levels, new devils. But you should not be discounting all of the hard work you've done and all that you are capable of. It's simply that a new challenge has presented you with something your body and mind are not used to, and you just need some practice to adapt to it. If you can remember to discipline yourself to diagnose it, meditate, demonstrate indifference to the outcome, indifference to the sabotage itself, and see how you can work up a momentum of winning in service of blasting through that sabotaging behavior through numerous and frequent small wins, you could be well on your way to breaking through any plateaus and doing it with a sense of style and grace. All of this being said, I hope you take what I say seriously at the start of this video and actually go and do the work. Not just listen to me, but to do the work. Managing this in any level of self-defeating behaviors is extraordinarily difficult to do and for some of these behaviors, damn well impossible without someone who's worked closely with this phenomenon and high performers. If you have an expensive goal, you should not be paying discount prices to go solve it. Make sure you find someone who can help you handle your very expensive and very painful problems. The video next week is going to be slightly different. I was kindly invited on a coaching call with another organization where I was able to share a bit of my life story and engage with my coaching style. I'll show you this video and you'll get to see what it's like to go work with me and to see how it is that I go and engage on some of these calls. I'll be opening up my calendar soon for limited coaching appointments to teach mental strength, effective communication, and advanced leadership skills to help you live your legacy year this year. Don't forget to like this video. Don't sabotage your own success. And I'll see you next time.